be a musician, you have to be really an entrepreneur first and a musician second. But being a musician second doesn't really cut it because you have to be a great musician to succeed anyway. So the balance now is that trying to be an entrepreneur as well as maintaining being a good musician. Where in the past, I think you didn't really have to be an entrepreneur. You could just be a really great musician and there would be people uh, who would be hired to do different tasks and do different jobs. But money was getting generated back then, so there was you know more money to go around. Should have been on the river and see G nineteen and ten. Sixties and seventies, and even some of the eighties. I've just read about it, and I've talked to older musicians who lived through it and there was uh, there was touring circuits all over the country um, that were established with clubs where you know you could make a living pretty much by doing touring um, and there was an established uh, industry surrounding all of this which was filled with booking agents publicists managers record stores record labels uh, DJs radio stations and um, it seems like the public at large really loved music as a uh, cultural kind of hobby. Um, so things have changed quite a bit since then. I guess if you include practicing music and playing gigs, it's probably about 70-30. 70% 70 30. 70 promotion, 30% music. Yeah. So all of these little things that build an audience are part of the bigger plan and that really kind of like bring everything together. So yeah, this stuff has to get done. It's kind of daunting to think that you've got to be super great at all these tasks. You know, it really kind of gets in the way of playing music. What I'd like to do is, is be able to tour for two or three month periods at a time and then have equivalent amount of time to re-energize, write music, work on new stage shows, and then continue that cycle over and over again. Um, so it'd be nice to not to have to live in the city when you're actually home from tour. If you could be somewhere where you're isolated, you know, if Aaron and I could just have like a camper or like a little cottage somewhere where we could turn off the internet, turn off the phones and go for a couple weeks and really work on ideas. And, um, that would be my ideal. We do this to play music. You know, so it's, we can't think about it financially so much, even though we have to make money. But, you know, if you include travel time and rehearsal time and gig time and then all of the office work times two people, Erin um, and I do most of the work, you know, it's, you know, under a dollar an hour. You know? Yeah. You know, it's always a challenge to try to make a living, which is... It's hard to even talk about that. The day job only takes 40 hours a week, but a music business job takes 80 or 90 hours a week. So it's like, if I really wanted to work on more music, I would give up on the business side and forget about trying to make money off it. But it's a lot of fun playing in front of people. It's a lot of fun touring. It's a lot of fun working on music at this level. Um, so it's a lot to give up. I hope someday that we can do what we want, you know, uh, we're doing the best we can right now. But I think the ideal situation is that we continue to play music, so by any means necessary. And so we're still doing that. Yeah.